about doing a spacewalk do you think would be the most surprising for people to hear about? Like what do you think is the most interesting aspect of it that maybe isn't just, well, obviously you're outside in space. Yeah, yeah. There's so many really fascinating things about doing a spacewalk. It is entirely your sensory overload. It's, it is every sensation that you have as a human being wrapped up in six hours. First of all, as just to take you through like getting out the door, as you're getting up, suited up, it's like this is something professionally that you've looked forward to for a long time and practiced. You know it's it's not gonna be easy. You're super focused, you've studied, so you're, you know, you're on the top of your game and you go out the door and move your way over to where you're supposed to go to work and then the sun starts to come up and you see the planet right below you. I mean, you have total control of that, of where you're, where you're looking and it's a little shocking and somewhat a little scary. It makes you sort of hold on a little bit for a second, <laughs> but double check your tethers, make sure you're okay. Okay, my heartbeat just went down, I'm okay. Now the sun's up so I'm getting a little bit hot because I'm working real a whole lot and then the sun starts to go down 45 minutes later oh man now I'm getting super cold and I'm starting to get hungry because I'm out there for a couple hours in the middle of it you're having a conversation with the folks on the ground so it's tying you right back to earth on my first spacewalk we were up hanging out at the solar array and uh, we happened to fly over Canada and the northern lights were below you it's like holy moly that's, that's amazing. amazing that was compelling left an impact on me because it it reminded me that there's so much out there in space that's going on that we have absolutely no control of. You know, probably in those northern lights, my background is as a, is a scientist, but I'm sure that it, it started from some type of solar flare and then the magnetic field of the Earth gets activated as the particles come toward the Earth. And we can't do anything about that. That's what it is. And I think that was the most compelling feeling. Like we squabble down here about energy or whatever we squabble about down here on Earth, which is very inconsequential to really what's going on in the rest of the universe. I mean, we are only one little planet, but it is getting affected by the rest of the universe. And I think that really came true when I, when I was sitting there and that green stuff was below me hitting the earth and it is what it is, you know? We're just yeah. part of it. So it's like all of that and then at the end of it, you're like, wait a minute, tick tock, you know, like we have to get back in the house, right? So you have to go back, you know, then your brain starts to tick again, did it get everything done? Where's all my equipment? Where's my buddy? Where's my partner? Make sure all of that, you know, sort of like survival skills, I think at the end, this sort of tick in, you know, come to, come to play. And every now and then it dawns on you that like, hey, I'm in a very dangerous place, actually. <laughs> the main goal of this spacewalk is actually to go outside and come back in both of you. And I think it, it finally at some point in time that, that kicks in. So we, we practice all this on Earth, but there's always something that you don't anticipate. Either it's too hot or too cold for a piece of metal to work correctly. You might have to wait. And so there's a, there's a lot of highs that you got something done really quick and fast and you are successful. A lot of lows of like, I'm working my as hard as I can and I, and I can't get this done. And maybe you have to alter the plan and call your call your buddy in to help you out. So it is really a huge spectrum. What is it like or what does it feel like to see the outside of the ISS so close knowing it's just like falling, controlled falling, uh -huh. just through space? Um, it, you, you recognize that it's sort of fragile <laughs> and you're living in there. I think that's one of the things and it's also incredibly beautiful. It sounds sort of silly maybe, but it, it really feels like you're in space. You are really part of this, this universe versus inside you're sort of like on a ship i guess it's equivalent to like when you're on a boat mm -hmm. and you're on the boat and you're having a, a pretty cool view of the water and all that kind of stuff and then if you jump out and you go for a swim and you have some goggles on and you're looking around underneath i think it's probably that different it's like you're in it right you're, yeah. you're you are in it i think that's probably a, a good description of it I had the opportunity to be on the top of P6 when we had a, a, a solar ray sticking up and then looked down at it and it was super cool. I also had the opportunity to be on the front of it, like a, somebody on the front of a <laughs> ship, you know, like, uh, like doing that type of thing. And that's your house, that's your home, that's your base. You want to stay connected to it, you don't want to go away from it. It's humongous. It's absolutely <laughs> humongous and you realize that um, you're pretty far away from the whole, you know, the door to get in. Uh, but. Uh, 
it's an engineering marvel. And, and you look at all the different pieces and parts that came from all the different agencies and countries, and it's uh, it's amazing that we were able to put that all together. So it's humbling, super humbling, because you know, you know you're just one guy out there. Hopefully, you're not making a mess of it and making a mistake. And all the work of all those people, I mean, it's culminated into that amazing laboratory. It it makes you stop for a minute.